Talking insects now and why it's a good idea to go ahead and start scouting in your pastures. Here's our forage specialist for extension, Brian Pugh, to get us up to speed. I'm Brian Pugh. I'm the State Extension Forage Specialist for OSU. And today we're going to be talking a little bit about headworms in sorghum as well as fall armyworm in forages across the state. So starting about three or four weeks ago, we did start to see significant moth flights uh, in Oklahoma. Started in eastern Oklahoma, but it's really covered the entire state now. And those moth flights lead to young larvae, young army worms that consume forage and again some of our crops such as sorghum and corn. So fall army worm is probably one of our most common pests that we see annually in forages. Uh, sometimes we see them earlier in the year, like, like this summer. Sometimes they're a little later in the year. Uh, but they essentially, those young caterpillars, uh, go through six different stages as they molt. We call those instars. And as we get into those later instars, those large caterpillars, they can consume a significant amount of forage. Uh, we can tell a fall army worm by the inverted Y that you can see on its head. That is a key identifying characteristic for fall army worm. Then we also see, again, the sorghum headworm is really a complex of multiple species. The three most common that we see here in Oklahoma are fall army worm, but also corn earworm and sorghum webworm. So the life cycle of the fall army worm, which I'll talk a little bit more about, uh, which we're seeing rampant in forages right now, uh, female moths, essentially, they don't live here. They can't overwinter here. So they're starting in the Gulf Coastal states. Each year, they begin to migrate northward. They go through their cycle. They lay eggs. We have a series of caterpillars molting through those instars. They then pupate in the soil for about two weeks uh, and then we have another crop of moths that fly further northward. And that's how we see this progression every year. Again, some years that's later, that might be August or September, years where we have really good conditions for the fall army worm and good quality forage for them to feed on, that tends to happen a little early, earlier like what we're seeing this year. Thresholds for fall army worm in pasture is about three or four half inch long larvae per square foot. And the reason that we would recommend you scout early and try to catch those larvae before they're a half inch long is because they're much easier to control with an insecticide application. If we allow those larvae to get larger than that, again, it takes higher rates and oftentimes we don't control all those larvae. So early scouting is the key uh, when we're looking at fall army worms. One of the easiest ways to scout for fall army worms in forages is actually with your normal clothes hanger. And uh, again, if we take that clothes hanger and make it into a square, that's about two thirds of a square foot. We know our threshold in forages is three to four half inch long caterpillars per square foot, which would be two to three half inch long caterpillars per her coat hanger, so to speak. So this is a really handy scouting tool if you're out in the field and you're trying to count how many larvae are there and decide if we've hit that economic threshold for an insecticide application. So when we look at thresholds for sorghum headworm, it's gonna be a little bit different than what we see in pasture. If it's in a vegetative stage and we're seeing feeding on the leaves, it really needs to be more than 40% of the plants have damage to the leaves before we would even consider an insecticide application. If we're in that heading stage, especially in that flowering or milk stage, then what we would want to do is actually scout the number of caterpillars per plant. We would be looking at somewhere around two caterpillars per head would be sufficient threshold to warrant an application of insecticide. One of the, the key characteristics that we look for when we're scouting for those very small caterpillars is what we call window painting. And that's essentially where a caterpillar is not large enough to consume the entire leaf surface. So it just scrapes some of the vascular tissue off and it leaves an area that's actually white. It gives that leaf a window paned appearance from a distance and that's your first sign that you do have fall army worms present. 
If you want more information about insecticides that are labeled for control of fall, fall armyworm or sorghum headworms, contact your local county extension educator and they can help you with that. And additionally, if you want more information, there will be fact sheets linked on the OSU SUNUP website on the management of fall armyworm in pastures and hayfields, as well as the management of sorghum headworms.